But if you are not ready for the war, because we, if you are a scalper like me, it's just a war zone sometimes. Mm -hmm. You really get thrown left to right, left to right. And if you don't manage yourself, yes, you, you, you will be eaten alive. and welcome back to another TFT interview. Today I have the pleasure to host Michael from Netherlands who just told me a very sensitive story and he just showed me how strong person he is. So without further ado, let's get started. Hello Michael and welcome. Hello, thank you. So can you tell us about yourself and if you want to, you can share your story with the audience so that everyone can see, like I'm just amazed of um, uh, your strong mindset and um, yeah, if you would like to just share some parts of it and let us know who you are and what got you into trading. Yes, of course. Okay, I'm Michael. I'm 33 years old. I started trading in 2017 in cryptocurrency. And till this day, I still trade. Of course, I blew many accounts in the first in the first uh, few years. Yeah, like before I, yes, before I really started to learn to take some losses and that kind of stuff. And yes, I'm very grateful where I am today. I'm grateful for TFT that made me possible to accelerate my process. And I'm still learning every day. I am profitable, but we all learn every day. Every successful yeah. trader learns still every day. But yeah. what got me into trading was really strange because uh, in 2017, I uh, had a car accident. I broke my back as a passenger with my ex-girlfriend in the car. And uh, that took two years to re rehabilitate. Yeah, yeah I, I find it a very hard word, but in the Netherlands, it's revelation but uh, mm -hmm. yes everybody knows what i'm talking about i think yeah and it took two years i needed to learn walk again i needed to do so many things to to get my body stronger again mm -hmm. uh, all the doctors were saying you can't do your job anymore and and at that time i already had my company in uh, construction so I do uh, renovations at homes. I build old homes into new homes to today's standards with all the new plaster, tie work, uh, all that good stuff. But the doctors kept saying, you need to uh, go look for something else because this with your back, it's not, it's not possible anymore. And I kept saying, I will decide that myself because I, I want to try it. And what were the options they gave me? Uh, a shoe drawer you know i needed to draw some shoe designs and i mm -hmm. thought that, that will make me really depressed mm -hmm. and i am in construction since i'm 16 years old and uh it's it's a passion of me not only construction itself but helping people is a passion of me so uh of course i started uh, uh at the bottom just on the big building sites and uh, that's all and that stuff but um, very soon in my uh, learning curve in in my yeah in my job i discovered in myself i want to do everything and i want to be able to to uh, contract full houses myself with my own company so yeah that's why i got my company it's all 10 years ago i started so i'm doing it for 10 years for myself now and i'm grateful for that but uh, to go back to the story of the accident yeah. they kept saying you you will not be able to continue your company and your job and you need to find something else and all that stuff. And I, I, I didn't accept it because, uh, yeah, the most people uh, hear something from a doctor and they take it for granted. And mm -hmm. I am already since a young age very skeptical. Um, I don't trust anything very easily and mm. that's because of what i experienced of course through life but um yes that made me believe in myself and also i believe very strongly in the law of attraction mm. and i um on the right time uh when i was laying in my bed on the on the hospital room I uh, at the ceiling and blah, 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 very boring. And I saw a YouTube video of, of Dr. Joe Dispenza, a great guy, mm. and he really inspired me to, um, yes, to believe more in, in the process and the law of attraction because he focused on the power of the mind, mm. but the law of attraction is also power of the mind. So it was a little bit a coincidence that I already uh, discovered the law of attractions a few years before I had the accident and I, I was practicing it daily. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but then, then I saw him, and he also had a similar experience with a severe accident, and he he, he couldn't do anything anymore. The doctors as well said to him, uh, yes, you, you will be in the wheelchair the rest of your life. And that really inspired me. And, and from that day, I started to visualize, visualize myself walking again, uh, yeah. doing the things I love again and that stuff. And um, the doctor who helped me uh, rehab, re- Rehabilitate. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce it. <laughs> and and uh, he he also saw, oh, you really want, you really want so heavy, I'm going to help you. And normally they, they say, yeah, you can do it once a day uh, because the insurance only pays once a day. And mm. um, I was intern uh, in the hospital for more than three months. So mm. every day I had appointments uh, for an hour and a half to practice walking, um, gain strength in my muscles again, in my body and that stuff. And uh, I had agreement with him because he said, I wished everyone was so motivated like you. Uh, you can't ta- tell this to my uh, colleagues, but uh, come twice a day. So mm-hmm. in the morning and then at the end of the day, I was uh, allowed to do the practice, the same practices I did in the morning, but then uh, yeah, more than normal yeah. and that really helped me as well but uh yeah uh, a few years later i uh i am here and i'm still working in my company i walk i i still ride bikes on the tracks and uh, that's also a that's passion amazing. of me riding mm-hmm. bikes on the tracks and uh, yes i'm very grateful for that i believed in myself i believed in in visual uh, the, the the strength of the, the possibility of a strong mind and believe yeah. in yourself and you're halfway there and i really yeah, I, I say it to everyone i i i come across in daily life when they struggle keep positive and keep being thankful for the things that are going good yeah. every uh people who is struggling can pronounce at least one or two things they are grateful for and just yeah. focus on, on on the things that are good and don't try to focus all the time on the negative stuff because yes the, it will only get worse if you do that but it is very easy to do when everything is good around you if yeah, you yeah. are in a messy situation it's really hard so I, I i understand it's really hard for people to be positive when they are low yeah. but that's that's the strong part of it. When you can do that, the yeah, sky is the limit on, on every yeah. part in your life. And I strongly believe in that. So, uh, yes, I'm very thankful. And uh, I, I saw the accident really as a, a, a negative thing in my life. And, of course, still this day, I still experience pain. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm grateful for, for where I am today. And I also could have been in a wheelchair the rest of my life. And, yeah, that's not the case, thankfully. So, yeah, I'm very, very proud on the process, of course, what I did to myself, but also very grateful for keeping believing in myself and and don't take anything for granted what what doctors say. You know, doctors can say something, but that doesn't mean they are right all the time. And uh, yeah, that's that's the story. Yeah, everything that happened to you is so unfortunate, but I'm so happy to see how strong person I have in front of me today. And uh, I hope that you're going to motivate other people to be grateful for everything in life because, yeah, you definitely know your life has taught you a really big lesson. Definitely. Yes. And I, yeah. I try to spread that to everyone, to uh, yeah. yeah, the positive and, and what's, what's possible. And I really hate people who spread hate. And uh, people mm-hmm. know me from Discord and I'm a big love spreader. And it annoys some people, but I spread love everywhere I go and I, I don't interact with hate. I, I'm very focused on love. That's and that's beautiful. not in a gay manner because a lot of guys, when I send hearts, they see it as gay, but that's their weakness, you know. Yeah. I just share love. That's something yeah. else. That's so beautiful. And how, how did you find trading? How did you, you st- said that you started with crypto? Yes, I uh, yeah. So that was going back to my accident again. I was at home. Mm. Uh, I'm always uh, a guy who wants to do stuff and don't want to mm. waste time. And yes, I was two years at home. I couldn't work. I couldn't do anything. I was fighting insurance, and that was a really hard thing to do. And um, then I discovered trading of yeah, mm. not trading, but cryptocurrency. And then yeah. I started uh, learning about trading um, and I, I, I fell in love with the charts, like you said, as well. And I, I, I just 
dove right into it <clears throat> and I mm. wanted to understand how it worked. But yeah. yes, as we all do experience uh, in the beginning, it looks so easy, but it is not easy at all. Mm. And you really need to find a strategy and yeah, try to stick to it. But yeah. uh, that, that was the time I discovered trading in 2017. I started in cryptocurrency in Bitcoin and it was in the bull run, but at the end of the bull run. So I, I bought it yeah 13k or something mm -hmm. and um and then it plummeted to 9k in in a week's later and uh, i thought oh shit and blah 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 but uh yes uh i i learned the hard way i can say i learned the hard way because i blew up mm -hmm. many accounts mm -hmm. and uh i was very stubborn when uh when it uh, comes to taking my losses mm -hmm. and since i take my losses I'm consistently profitable and that doesn't mean I don't have losing days because I still have losing days till this day but I them. can yeah I can build back up from the loss uh, yeah pretty fast but that, that depends mm -hmm. on the loss I took of course sometimes the loss uh, recouping takes a little bit longer but overall uh, I'm very uh, consistent in my in my trading and mm -hmm. I used to scalp a lot of cryptocurrency and since I um yeah, went in, uh, uh, discovered TFT. I only mm. scalp on TFT and I use my own accounts uh, for longer term plays, mid term plays, swing, swing trades. Swing trades. And mm -hmm. uh, yes, I also have a scalping account in cryptocurrency still. But yeah, since a few months, it's worth it again to scalp cryptocurrency. But in my honest opinion, uh, Bitcoin was so weak. And, and and yes, I shorted, it, of course, mm -hmm. um, but uh, to scalp like I did in, in 2020, 2021, I, I was really um, known as a, a, a legend on BitMEX. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, was a, I was a scalper there, a very insanely scalping there. And it was very profitable. And it was always also the right time, of course. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, in 2017, I started, uh, blew many accounts, 2019, uh, I blew another account because I was uh, I I learned from, I thought I learned from mm. um, uh, not selling at the top and then it went to thirty nine thirteen thousand nine hundred ish or something and I shorted yeah. and uh, um, I shorted with way too many leverage and uh, way too much leverage and I got liquidated again mm -hmm. and 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 I was so pissed of it because I knew uh, what trading was so I was a little bit upset about myself. But I, I didn't give up. And then uh, 2020 came. And then we had Corona. Bitcoin yeah. crashed to 3,500 um, or so. Yeah. I was working. I got an alert on my phone because I still was trading. I just topped mm -hmm. up my account and I kept going. And then I saw an alert of Bitcoin to uh, broke 6K. And I thought, oh, this must be a glitch or, uh, or something or a bug. And then I opened yeah. on my mobile the chart. And I really saw live that candle going so boom. <laughs> two, five, four, uh, okay. Yeah. And then I raced back home. I really, I left my job. I left the customer. I said, I need to go home now. And then I bought five Bitcoin at, uh, yeah, between four and 5,000 euros. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, uh, that was on my birthday. So that was a nice birthday present. A gift, yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I really remember posting on my uh, Facebook, uh, thank you, Bitcoin. <laughs> For this amazing birthday present. And then a year later, uh, it was at 60k. So yeah. uh, in the meantime, um, yeah, the bull market, I traded every day. I almost uh, said no to every job I had because I was outperforming my earnings uh, yes, for my, for my company. And yeah. then I, I just only traded and that uh, drained me a lot. My girlfriend mm -hmm. said to me after a year or so, "Fine, you really need to get out of the house, Michael." I say, <laughs> "Yeah, yeah, yeah, but I, I, it's it's amazing time, great, you know." So I, <laughs> it was a little bit unhealthy. I what I was doing, mm. but um, yes, it made it made me very good returns, and I learned from I learned the hard way. So I knew at 60k, uh, yes, this 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 do doesn't gonna end well, you know. Everybody was uh, screaming 100k Bitcoin, blah blah. Yeah. Uh, and I, I also, I need to admit, I also believed in that hype, mm -hmm. uh, even after all my experiences. And I, my plan was to sell at 73k. That was my mm -hmm. game plan. Mm -hmm. And it never came. So uh, I sold at 48k. So very late as well, but still, I, I locked but in But still, my it's an amazing so profit. Yeah. 
Yes, exactly. I bought five and I accumulated way more with scalping. So, uh, yeah, I did very well. And yeah. I'm thankful for it. But uh, yes, then at 48K, I really switched and I said, not again, you know, not again. So I sold yeah. almost everything. I kept, I think, two or three Bitcoin. I bought it 4.5K, but I, yeah, with scalping, I doubled my amount. So I, I sold, I think, seven Bitcoin at 48K. Mm. And then I started um, the, yeah, the bear mode. I, I, I turned in a bear and I, I only shot it and I only used USDT. I never went mm-hmm. back in Bitcoin again uh, the last one and a half year. Yeah, one and a half year. Mm-hmm. Uh, recently, I bought at 16K or something, uh, but only 20% of my portfolio. Mm-hmm. I'm still mostly in USDT. And yes, mm-hmm. it was an amazing run to 28K where we are now. And also I took a little bit of advantage of it, but I'm purely occupied when I'm trading with TFT that I only really um, trade longer term now. So I'm not scalping as much as I did. So I missed a lot of opportunities as well in crypto, but you can't win them all, you know. You you yeah. just focus on the bigger picture. I focus on the bigger picture now and uh, I still believe and I don't have a crystal ball, but I, I don't believe the bull market is there for Bitcoin. And I can be wrong and I'm happy to be wrong. So I will mm-hmm. buy higher. I don't care. But I still believe we will go lower and I'm mm-hmm. ready for that. And if that doesn't come, I'm still ready for, for what may happen. Whatever. I, yeah. I, so, yeah. But TFT, uh, yes, that's my scalping uh, place. I only scalp on TFT. Mm-hmm. And how, how did you learn it? Did you join Myself. any communities? Just did you... It's really our own build strategy. I did some courses in the past, but mm-hmm. what you told me earlier, a lot of them are scammers. A lot of them yeah. are not even profitable. And the mm-hmm. only thing you learn in those courses are just the pure basics of TA. You can find that for free everywhere on the internet. Yeah. But yes, yeah. we all are new. We all trust and we all think, oh yes, that that looks very successful and, and that guy looks has a n- nice life and all that stuff. But most of them, are not honest. They yeah. just show some good things happen to them and they don't show their losses. And I really believe in, in some influencers and that's Tom Huga. He is really an amazing guy. He doesn't ask any money and he shares everything he knows for free. Mm-hmm. But uh, yes, I started watching, Yeah, in, 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 I, I'm going back in the past now, but I started with uh, Crown's Crypto Cave. It's a mm-hmm. great guy. He also has good courses, but also just the basics of TA, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's still, I, I still think he's a great guy. I th- still think he's profitable. But uh, at that time, I really thought he was the best and, uh, and that kind of stuff. But nobody is the best in trading. There's mm-hmm. really nobody the best. The only good traders are just following their rules and their mindset and, and they keep just building. They yeah. don't want to be- get rich quick and they just, uh, it's a marathon and not a sprint. And I strongly yeah. believe in that. But what I mostly believe in is psychology. You can have the best strategy you think you have, yeah. but if you don't follow your rules or your, um, yes, your, your yeah, just your rules, you are not going to last long in this game. Yeah. That's just yeah. a pure honest answer of me and, and it's a humble opinion of me, but I learned the hard way as well. And even if you have the best strategy, if you don't stick to it or you mm. don't stick to your take profit or your take loss or whatever you call it yeah you may luck you may be lucky sometimes and of yeah. course you will take some losses and looking back on the chart oh shit why didn't i why did i do this and i, mm. I needed to hold it and, and break even and all, all that stuff but i really learned it's better to take a loss and don't feel fomo but that's so easy to say We are Mm -hmm. still human. We all experience FOMO. Even the best traders experience FOMO. But you just don't act on it. Mm -hmm. And and you just wait for your edge. And if the edge doesn't come, then it's no trading day. If if you're going to force trades, and I still do that sometimes, maybe I come over like, oh, he is the, uh, he all know, but I, I, I still make mistakes. And and I still take some losses that would not be needed at all because I'm stubborn as well still sometimes. <laughs> but I know I can, yes, I, I know I can make it back. And, and, and in the past, I just couldn't take a loss because I thought, oh, no, oh, no. And But then it goes way deeper and deeper. And then it's a loss you physically can't even take because mm-hmm. it's too much. And then you blow up your account. Yeah. Because somebody else will take the loss for you. Yeah. But that 
is yeah i i, I really strongly uh suggest that's not a good way and just stick to your risk parameters that's the good mm-hmm. way and tft uh yes it's maybe hard for a lot of people to succeed in the challenges yeah. but it makes you a better trader yeah yeah it you need to stick to your drawdown you rules to, yeah yes and and if you don't do that yes you can be lucky sometimes but on the long run you you, you will not be profitable yeah. or you are just very lucky gambling but i don't <laughs> believe in gambling and uh yes I, I just stick to my rules and I take profits way early, but I rather to take profits too early than too late. Yeah. So and yes. What did, what did you struggle with the most with trading and how did you overcome those struggles? Yes, taking losses was for me the biggest part and and uh, shorting. I really was afraid of shorting because mm-hmm. uh, when I just started shorting, I got liquidated. So I, I got a little bit beat. PTSD of it Mm -hmm. and uh, since a few years I started charting and sometimes it's way easier but I prefer long trades still this Mm -hmm. day I prefer long scalps long trades but I yes I learned to adjust when it's needed and then I mm-hmm. just short. But that was really a struggle for me to 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 short. I, mm-hmm. I, I almost physically couldn't press the sell button you know (laughs) and and that was really and that was purely my one experience i had with going liquidated yeah. when i shot it but that's with so many fears in life mm-hmm. when you experience something you take that experience to everything you go through in life and you think oh when that happens again i will get that same thing that happened to me yeah. again but that's a illusion you're gonna feel the same pain yes right? yeah and you only but it's get... just the amygdala fooling us. <laughs> yes, it's just yeah. an illusion. And mm. and I really strongly believe in pushing your fears. So mm. when you are fear of something, even a little mosquito or a fly mm. or whatever it is, or dogs, if you've been, been bitten by a dog once, that doesn't mean that other dog you, you will encounter will also bite you. But yeah. it's very human to have that emotion and you drag it till infinity to every yeah. single human or to say every single dog you experience but that's just an illusion and that's with trading as well so that shorting fear of me was also an illusion but i only came on top of that when i just uh, started pressing the, the sell button yes <laughs> and just press the sell button you know <laughs> so yeah that was a struggle of me to k- taking losses was a struggle of me as well but mm. yeah as i say every every fear or every struggle you can overcome by just putting yourself in that environment you are so yeah. afraid of or so fearful of and then you will experience other um outcomes and that's yeah. needed for self-esteem and confidence and you can only build that up to just just do it and just go there and and experience yeah. what's the outcome and then you will see one time it goes good one time it goes bad but if you follow your rules and your strategy it will come good it's gonna- yeah, yes. it's, that's that's the way how we um, we are widening our comfort zone. And for trading, that's what we need. We have to widen our comfort zone and be more comfortable with the uncomfortable uncertainty that the markets are giving to us. Yes, yes. And it was a really good example because, yeah, the fears are the problem for all of us. And we have to expose ourselves and meet them. That's how we're going to accept them and uh, learn how to control our emotions when we face them next time. Yes. So it was a really good example from your side. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And to help you uh, can do that, eh? be disciplined. And for me personally, it really helps to have a very autistic routine. It, for some mm-hmm. people, they think, what the fuck? Why does he do this kind of stuff, you know? But if mm-hmm. I don't do it, I lose my mental strength. Mm-hmm. And that can be very easily with um, very ordinating my stuff around me. They need to be separate from each other. And if that is not lined up, I, I get a little bit itchy. And mm-hmm. it's very strange. But when I just do those things and go to the gym, go to the sauna, uh, that stuff, it, it's a preparation for me, mind yeah. for my mind. Yeah. Okay, look, we can have the best strategy, but if you are not ready for the war because it's just a war zone trade and we really, if you are a scalper like me it's just a war zone sometimes mm-hmm. you really get thrown left to right left to right and if you don't manage yourself 
yes, you 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 will be eaten alive. Yeah, yeah. And you can only fi- uh, follow the rules and your system when you're mentally ready. Yeah, so when you that's... don't have a good day or you had a agree of a, a argument with your girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever it may be, or, or or something in your family, then it's just not a trading day. Yeah. But I was addicted to trading as well. So and still I'm a little bit addicted to trading, but um it's 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 just about the balance that's with everything in life all the good things you can get addicted to very very easily Mm -hmm. but if you are just disciplined and and till this day i just trade a few hours a day and then Mm -hmm. i just go on with my day and of course when i look at night at my charts and i say oh man this was really an easy day for my strategy and i used to have a little bit remorse on that why why didn't i just keep trading but Mm. yeah Somehow, I don't feel that FOMO uh, as much anymore because I believe in my system and I believe the trade of the market is not going anywhere. Yeah, I can we're going to always have opportunities. Yeah. yeah. And and not every day is a trading day. It all depends on your strategy, of course. But when you are scalping, yeah. yes, I'm, I'm so sure you can always find an opportunity and at least take some money out of the market, but it's yeah. not a must. You don't have to trade every day. That's true. Yeah. Do you have, you said that you have a daily routine. Would you like to share us how your daily routine looks like? And do you have any favorite session when you trade um, that you're sticking to? With, yeah, yes. You can. Hmm? Yes, I uh, I have a routine and that's, uh, of course, we wake up in the morning. Then I start with breakfast. Then mm-hmm. I start with my coffee. Then I start with my cigarette. It's not a good routine, the cigarette, but yes, <laughs> I'm still human. And, um, and then I go to work mm-hmm. and uh, I trade New York session. Mm-hmm. And at my time, it's, um, yes, uh, a quarter past three in the, mid, mm-hmm. in the, in the afternoon. Afternoon. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I trade uh, one or two hours and then I'm done and I don't trade anymore. Only maybe at, at the evening, but ma- most of the time I go to my work in the morning and mm-hmm. then uh, till I start, I start early and then I uh, can be done early as well. So so customers of me know I, I work till that time and then I trade a few hours and then I come yeah. back or I come back the next day. But when I'm done working on my planning on that day, I just go after trading. I do my meal with my girlfriend and the kids and then mm-hmm. I go to the gym and then I do the sauna and, and, and all that good stuff. That's just for me, my meditation uh, I sit meditating there uh, in the sauna and all, all people around me, I don't care. I just have my routine and I believe in myself. And if I don't yeah. do those things, I, I, I don't feel confident about myself. So I keep doing what feels good. So yeah. that's uh, a bit uh, a big part of my routine. Yes. And of yeah. course, I forgot the most important thing. And that's being grateful every day for all the things I can be grateful for. And that's a long list, I can tell you. And I'm it's not two minutes, but it's really, I think, close to five minutes of talking to myself in my head, in my head, mm. and, and really structured about uh, yeah, what I'm thankful of. Yeah. And I just repeat it a couple of times a day in my head. And then I do my uh, yes, my greatest thing and 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 then I just go along with my day. That's amazing. Incredible. Yes. Would you like to tell us a little bit about your strategy? Like, do you use any indicators? Do you do you focus on I, price action? I use mostly price action, but in the past, I need to admit, I was a strong believer of indicators as well. Mm-hmm. And I still use some indicators, but just the basic ones, uh, MACD, moving averages, uh, RSI. Uh, support and resistance, supply demand. Uh, mm-hmm. I also uh, studied uh, the the Michael you are uh, talking about SMC, I but see. I don't yeah. use it really on my strategy. But mm-hmm. somehow my my trades look a bit like that strategy, but mm-hmm. I'm purely price action, and and because all indicators are lagging, and yeah. um, price action can be manipulated, of course, but volume isn't easy to be manipulated. So I focus on volume and price action, uh, mm-hmm. divergences in the RSI, uh, stochastics. Stochastic, yeah. But sometimes I just purely trade naked and, and then mm-hmm. I just focus on the candles. And yes, that's that's really 
most of my strategy for the short term then eh? my longer term strategy is yeah it's 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 also a little bit like my short term strategy but more focused on divergence on the higher tight frames mm-hmm. more focused mm-hmm. on uh the structure of the the market and the old levels like support and resistance but indicators yeah not not that much anymore but i used to believe in my indicators a lot but yeah. Since I don't do that anymore, I have better entries and better access sometimes as well. But as I said earlier, I, I take my profits pretty soon when scalping. So I leave money on the table a lot, but I just buy mm. in again, yeah. you know, yeah. because my, my profit levels are very short. I, I just can do it multiple times and I just fix on 0.5% or a percent a day. And, mm. and when I have my 0.5%, I'm done. And sometimes I think at 0.3, 0.4%. Yeah, it's been enough. But that yeah. was really hard to learn because I was greedy as well. And I thought, you no, no, lot. I need to keep <laughs> trading because uh, why Why fix yourself on that amount? It's a ceiling you create. But when, yeah. you, com- when you compound it every day, yes, why you need more? Because yeah. a lot of people want more and more. And, and that's why I'm so thankful of TFT. Don't get me wrong, I have a decent sizes accounts of myself. But yes, when, when you trade with TFT, you don't need, if you at least trade with 100K or 50K, 100K at least, why you need more than 500 or $1,000 a day in, a, in, in, in an hour or two hours? If you yeah. don't be satisfied with that amount of money, you just stop trading mm-hmm. because it will blow your... And of course, eh, there are people who are doing way better than me, of course. I'm really not the best trader out there, not even close. But I just accept uh, those amounts per day. And and yeah, when I'm working and I, I'm late out of my work, I can't even trade. Oh yeah, I could trade, but I just focus on the New York Open. Mm-hmm. And if if it's past um, nine in the evening, I won't enter any trades anymore because uh, at my time, then 10 o'clock is very soon. And then that rollover uh, stuff comes and mm-hmm. I, I, I don't want to be involved in that because I did. And, and that's most of the time where I give my money back or my profits yeah. back or I, I enter in a trade. And, and as soon as I entered, I think why you weren't satisfied with the amount you made that day, why you want more. And that's yeah. a big problem for most people. They want more, more, more. And they Definitely. just, they just, and it, can't it, be... it ends up with the over trading excitement yes. and then blowing all the profits that you have. Yes. I used to over trade a lot. Mm. Yes. So, uh, since, uh, yeah, I don't know the exact time I'm doing this, but I I just focus on a few hours a day because I'm very busy in my company as well. And when I have a little bit less work uh, of it or it doesn't, uh, when I I hire the job and I'm done and the next job will be in a week or two, I can trade every day and I trade more than two hours. But when I'm working, I try to just come home, trade one hour or two hours max and uh, yeah, then I'm done. Before our yeah. interview, I also traded around an hour or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I made 0.4%. So uh, yes, I'm satisfied with that. I don't feel the urge to trade again now. I, I just need to work uh, after this. And yeah. then I just do do my company things. And when I'm done and I come home, I, I, I go to the sauna and I'm be happy for this day. So yeah, it, it, it's that's, just, that's yeah, simple that's for me. Simple. That's amazing. That's amazing. That, that's how um, everyone should be because we cannot also be focused on the charts for so long time. Um, yes. That's why it ends up with the emotions taking control over us yes. and them starting Impulsive. to trade instead of... Yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yes, that's really true what you say there. That's a very good one of you that you uh, uh, make of uh, point this up. Because uh, our brain, and that's maybe different for you than for me, but our brain can only focus for for X amount of time. And then, yeah. you, like you said, you get a little bit blurry and you mm-hmm. don't have the full focus. And, and you mm-hmm. can believe you have the full focus, but 
you you going a little bit in that stare mode. You you recognize that, and you're looking at the charts, and then you go stare a bit. It gets a little bit blurry, mm. and 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 of course, if you think, oh, I'm staring, uh, you you have focus again. But that's just for every human being different. Yeah. But when you are scalping, uh, it's so draining for for your for your focus. So yeah, yeah. for me, the sweet spot is a few hours. And I, I know of myself, I could do it longer, but I, I, I really need to be careful because some, then, then you get impulsive and you yeah. think, oh, yeah, I'm better than the market and, uh, and I know this and, and I can see things and, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but then you get slapped on the face. Yeah, all on yeah. your hands <laughs> and on your face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I totally agree. Uh, what advice would you give to new traders that are just getting started? Take it slow. Take it slow. <laughs> yes. And just don't flip flop from strategy to strategy. Mm. Give the strategy real time. Yeah. Just just at least 100 trades or something. And and mm. first of all, backtest. Just backtest mm. the strategy. Don't take it for granted when you see a YouTube video. Oh, a ninety percent hit rate. That's all <laughs> nonsense, man. I mean, if you're gonna backtest your strategy, you will see what the results are over time. So yeah. when you have a losing streak, you don't get all. Of course, you you don't like a losing streak. But if you yeah. backtest with your strategy enough, you will you will have the confidence somewhere deep inside from yeah I yeah. need to come over this and then I get the, the winning trades again and and on the long run you will succeed. But that's the problem of most people they get a loss in a strategy and they think oh, this strategy doesn't work Not anymore good. I need Let's something try else. Another one. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 that's a shame because the strategy can be perfect. But it's all here. Your mindset, your psychology, yeah. all that stuff. I can give my strategy to a lot of people, but that doesn't mean they will succeed. Yeah. Because yeah. I get a lot of, um, uh, when I'm on BitMEX, it's also, I don't want to promote anything. Eh? Don't get me wrong. But that's also an exchange I trade on sometimes. And and there people are asking, why are you not making YouTube videos? And and, and I want to teach and this and that. But I know it's full of degens there. They are mm. all gambling and, and that that will lose them not the money. And I only want to help people who are really um, in the right mindset. And, and yeah. most of them want to get rich quick mm. and... I'm not a guy who wants to ask money for it because, yeah, I'm doing good on my own. And I am really a strong believer uh, when you are successful, uh, you better spread it out and, and don't mm. ask anything for it in return. But that's the, the little tricky part because then you have a lot of people who just take your information and and then they leave. So that's why I still tell us they don't do it. But I, st I, I, I am actively helping people there because if they ask me something, I will tell them everything they want to know. Yeah. And uh, I don't ask anything for return, only just a little bit of appreciation. And uh, that's all. So, yeah I, yeah, I I know and I understand why people make courses and that stuff. And maybe I should do too because money, I don't hate money. I love money, of course, like we all do, but I just don't have the time to make videos and and do that stuff. I, I when I when I have the time, yes, I I will maybe do that, but I also take my privacy a little bit serious. And um, if I do it, I will only do it with my voice and no face and just just my voice. And my suggestion for a lot of new people is when they are liking scalping or whatever trading strategy. Go look in Tom Hugart. And I don't say he is the pro trader out there, but he, he focused a lot on mindset and psychology. He has a great book, The Best Loser Wins. And I read that multiple times. And you also have that good book of Mark Douglas, Trading in the Zone. Yeah. But that's all focused on psychology and, and not so big on strategy. And that's what most people get twisted. They think strategy is golden. No, yeah. it's just 20% of trading, 80% in my experience and my humble opinion, and I don't say I'm right, but that's my humble opinion, 80%
is mindset and psychology. Yeah, I totally agree. Thank you. Because <laughs> if it was if it was the strategy, many can learn technicals. Like yes, it's not hard. It's not hard at all to to learn technical analysis. No. But the hard thing to master is the psychology. Yes, that's to, really hard. To get to know yourself better and to know uh, how to manage yourself. <laughs> yes. Because it's not it's not a game against the market. It's a game. It's a game against us. It's it's yes, humans. You versus yes. you. Yeah. Yes. That's true. And human emotion doesn't change, so that's why the market structures are a bit repeatable. You know, they 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 yeah. get fear, they get mm. greed, and mm. and and of course that the market is just random. And and yeah. I believe in patterns as well, but very short said, it's just random. You don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. The only thing you can have is an edge with a higher yeah. probability that one thing happens over the other. Other, yeah. but that is yeah. not a guarantee. And that's why you have risk management. And yeah. that's where most people have a problem because yeah. they think, uh, I need to be right. But yeah. you don't have to be right to make money in this game. You just exactly. have to be smart. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's exactly like my new reel that we posted last week. <laughs> I was talking mm -hmm. exactly about the same thing, that it's not about being right and wrong. It's a, it's a probabilistic game. And yes. you don't need to know what is going to happen next to make money. You just have to have your edge and stick to your edge. And exactly. the results are going to come. Yes, that's exactly. True. I strongly believe yeah. in that as well. And and it's a nice saying as well. Trading is the hardest and easiest way to make money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. How did you find TFT and how is your experience with us? Oh, TFT is great. I love them. And uh, how did I find them? That's a good one. I think from Tino, I watched a, a YouTube video of him and that's mm -hmm. uh, Traders Re Reality. I, I came mm -hmm. across a video of him and I just watched because I also still watch YouTube videos just to kill some time. And yeah. uh, and, and, and and some guys I still watch uh, on a regular basis because I have my own TA, but sometimes mm -hmm. it's nice to have some confluences and, and that kind of stuff. And once in a video, he, he talked about TFT mm -hmm. and um, I, I all... Uh, yes, I, I knew about prop firms before, but mm -hmm. I thought it was all a scam and, 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 and I didn't trust it that well. But mm -hmm. when he, uh, I'm sorry, I, I burped a little bit, but mm -hmm. um, then uh, he he came across and, and he said, yeah, TFT and uh, check it out, blah, blah, blah. And, and I gave it a try. And of course, I failed multiple challenges but uh yes i i'm i'm happy to be past and a funded trader i uh i almost have two funded accounts now i need 0 0.9 percent and then i have my second funded account and uh yes i'm very grateful for tft i love them um the discord yes i i i love as well but yeah most people in there uh, in the general chat i mean yes they are not serious enough but uh it's it's all good. We all are who we are. I respect everyone. Yeah. I love everyone on this planet. But TFT on its own is great. I really love TFT. And Thank what it so makes much. available for, for traders is just gold. It's it's really gold. Thank you so much for being here, Michael, and sharing your uh, story and your experience with, with us. It's been a pleasure to have you here. And I wish you best of luck with uh, everything, with trading. And uh, yeah, it, you're such an inspiration for all of us. And I believe that the audience is going to definitely get inspired and motivated for you because you're, you're a hero. <laughs> oh, thank you, say. Anna. Yeah. Thank you for your kind words. It really gives me goosebumps again. And thank you for having me. Thank you for the nice talk. Thank you for, yeah, it was nice meeting you. And I wish you happy nice. profits as well. And I wish you, you and your loved ones all the best uh, out you. there. The yes. Thank you so much. To all of you watching, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and show Michael some love in the comments down below. Good luck with your trading and until next time.